Hey everyone, welcome to a new Stackland Studio experience. If you don't want to watch the rest of the video, then simply know I will be playing a lot of this game. But if you do want to stick around and learn what I like and what I don't like about Mass Effect Andromeda, then hang around because this was the best $5 I have ever wasted. <laughs> Do you want this game? Order it now at the link below, or try it with EA Access, also linked below. Okay, so as requested by almost everyone on my channel, I am scripting most of my videos from here on out, save for unboxings, build guides, and more along the real life style videos. So let's go ahead and get into this discussion. Gameplay! Pretty much just like Mass Effect 2. Honestly, that was my first impression when I downloaded the game with my EA Access subscription, which you can access with the link in the video's description. It feels, looks, and runs much like how ME2 ran and felt. I'm running it on medium graphics because I like to record my gameplay using Shadowplay, but I also downgraded my rig to a laptop and that video will be coming to you soon, so subscribe for that content. The gameplay you're watching is from a first playthrough on my first character. I chose a default look and barely touched the character creator, which is freaking massive. No joke, this game has so many options for character creation. I dare say it's almost a slightly more dialed in version of Skyrim CC. I love the gameplay. It feels so smooth, and they finally went with controls that I, as an FPS player, can get behind. I love the controls. It feels so great. The voice acting is okay, but I also glanced into the files, and there are several copies of each file, so I could understand if they're using a rough cut for the trial gameplay. I wouldn't knock any virtual points off for that. But what I will knock off points for is the goddamn QTE loading screen. Just like the goddamn elevator in ME2, the tram in Mia will become your worst nightmare. Throw the game onto an SSD and the issue has lessened, but it'll still be there. It's a pain and can be noticed nearly right away because of how much time you're spending on the arcs, assuming that you can bore the others like they were embassies, and the Nexus. Sam is the useful voice inside your head playing devil's advocate and telling you what you should do to save your life. I like it and it's a worthy replacement for Edie. It's witty, nice, and quite frankly has better humor than Edie ever wanted to. The best part of the story so far is they got Liara to Sony to voice a few lines. Holy shit, do I need to go into an explanation of this point? Liara to Sony, the most romanced character of all of the Mass Effect games. They got her in this game as a few lines. That right there earned my money. But moving forward, time and space issues! Okay, so from what I understand, this game takes place about 20 years before Mass Effect 3 happens. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I probably am wrong. So, they don't know that the Reapers killed most of humanity along with half of the other societies in space. In fact, it's not really referenced at all so far. I know that the game is supposed to be set in a similarly parallel universe, however it just seems that it's lazy planning and there should be some ability to connect to the Milky Way and find out what's happening, just to give a friendly nod to the end of the series. I mean, maybe they will, I don't know 100% because THE TRIAL ENDS! That's right, two missions and a hub mission later, and then the tutorial comes up with a paywall. 
I understand that you don't want people blowing through the campaign within 10 hours of the free gameplay that you've given them, but this is Mass Effect. You play the game for one freaking hour and you're hooked. I will add, however, that for me, two and a half-ish hours was spent only on the tutorial world, the first world that you crash land on. Spoiler alert. There's so much to explore and look at, and it's awesome! Within my 10 hours, I've already gotten to level 5. Assumably another limit since I'm not earning XP from killing the Krell over and over, which, seriously, let's take a moment to smack Bioware upside the head. The enemies look like the Protheans! Seriously, shave a little off the side of the models from ME and ME2, and you have the Krell. They're repetitive, have only five archetypes, and are all bugged as hell. Meaning you can simply jet boost above them, shoot them, and nova the hell out of them, and then you've killed them. Now for the precursor drones, I will simply be calling them the evil robot chocobo and the evil flying television. They are seriously easy to fight, even at level 5. I don't know if the enemies scale with the battle, but if they don't, it will be very boring searching old worlds once you upgrade your modern Mako, and you can go into the more dangerous areas infected by the radiation. Assuming that it's still there if you clear up the radiation. Again, spoiler alert. I don't think it's on purpose, but it's very difficult to get to many areas in the trial because you have a very weak nomad with very little life support support, beyond radiation level 1. Kinda sucks, but it could be patched with maybe level 2 radiation instead of level 1 and 3? It's like level 1, a walk in the freaking park, and then level 3 is just like instant fucking death. Also, some areas have been blocked off for either future areas of the story, or not to be able to access at all? However, you can, and as you can see, sometimes you can get around those barriers, but then you're trapped. Bioware, please add a clamber area on both sides instead of reminding us that we should have saved more often. So, my thoughts of the game so far. I freaking love it! Sure, there are a few bugs, and Bioware loves killing the goddamn main characters like I like drinking water. But besides those minor complaints, and the fact that the skeleton needs to be fixed to be slightly less creepy, minus those issues, this game is awesome. The story so far has me back to my personal favorite game in the series, Mass Effect 2, with an already memorable cast and some awesome nods to the original work. The music, as always, is fabulous, and the art, even on medium, mmm, so lovely. If not slightly need of some anti-aliasing? Honestly, it's okay though because it is still before launch. And we haven't gotten day one drivers from NVIDIA or AMD just yet. So my 1060 may even get more performance out of this game. We don't know, not yet. I have to put a huge thing in this video, however, and that it's that randomly the game crashed my whole damn computer. I don't know if this is the GPU, CPU, or just because I was running my laptop and, you know, the chassis burnt my hand when I touched it, Whoops. For the short of that, keep your computer cool. I now have an... I now enable Uber Fan Speed Mode from MSI that makes my whole room turn into the exhaust for a jet engine. I also put a laptop cooler under it just to make sure that the whole thing doesn't catch on fire. So, what's the final verdict for Mia? I love it! And it has my vote for best PC game of the year so far. For the best game, I think that goes to Horizon Zero Dawn. 
And I may even pick that up since they now have PS Now for all of their games. But I don't know. Nah, tell me down in the comments what you think. From the gameplay that you can see, that is obviously playing under my voice right now, and maybe your own experiences. Tell me in the comments section down below what you think about Mass Effect Andromeda. And if you'll be picking it up at the links in the video's description, or if you've already bought it from Origin or other sites. Let's have a discussion and talk about this. And I hope to see you all again in my next video very soon.